Can I make eggs today? <laughs> hmm. You've never really made eggs by yourself before. Um, do you want some help? Um, no, I think I can do it by myself. Are you sure? I am positively sure. Okay, well listen, I'll just be in the next room and if you need any help, you just ask, okay? Okay. All right, good luck. Thank you. So, let's start by turning on this burner here. Let's see. Seems like the right burner. Now we're gonna take our egg. Hmm, that's funny. Why isn't it heating up? Oops. Wrong burner. I think it's this one. That looks right. Okay, now we are going to crack the egg. Put that in there. I'm gonna wash my hands. Make sure always to wash your hands after your hands are Hey, right, Corey, you need any help? Uh, now I'm good. Now we're going to okay. add some pepper. I think that's enough. You all think so? I'm going to stir it. Break out there. There it is. Oops. How's it coming, Corey? Are you sure you don't need help? It's going. Hey, Corey, I kind of smell something burning. Um, do you want some help in there? Uh, nope. I'm good. Do you smell that? It starts to smell really bad. How about I come help? Um, no, no, I think it's, I think it's good. It's ready. All right. Do you like see. your eggs like this? Let me see what we got here. Oh, wow. That's, um, huh. That's interesting. Let's show it to them. Um, huh. Wow. That's, well, um, how about we move off the burner for a sec? Um, <laughs> how do you feel like that went? Looks cooked. Yeah, you want to eat it? Um, I mean, I can always help you make another egg. Unless you want to eat this. If you're good with this one, you can go ahead and eat it. Um, I think I need some help to make another one. You sure? <laughs> I mean, I, I tend to agree with you, but if you really want to eat this, you this can. This thing is black. There does seem to be a lot of pepper. Um, it's like burnt. It's like half burnt and half raw. I don't know how right. I did that. How about we start over? Oh, yes, I agree. All right, so I am wondering, some of it looks like it's soaked to the bottom a little bit. Did you happen to put any, like, butter or oil in it? Butter? Yeah, um, to keep it from sticking, and oh. it makes the egg taste really good. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well, um, how about we, we'll start with that step, okay? Okay. So let's see, you get your butter out. Let me get this cleaned up real quick here. Because, uh, I have a little bit of a messy pan. Yes. It's okay that you couldn't do it by yourself the first time. I definitely couldn't have done that either. Let's see. Here we go. All right, let's try this again. Put the butter on. So how about, oh let's start with some butter. Sorry, this thing is not coming off of the knife here. Hello, butter. There we go. All right. Um, let's make sure we turn our burner on. Good idea. Oh, wow, I see some egg splatter on the back of the stove. Was that yeah. from last time? Yeah, Interesting. I think so. right. I put it on this setting, right? That's why I put it on this one. Maybe a little bit lower than that. Ooh, okay. So right here? Yeah, that looks good. Spread this butter in. I'm gonna need a little bit more just to make sure, ensure that it doesn't 
stick to the pan. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to use this. Yeah, I'll spread it around. I can take that knife for you. Can you use that? Why, one? thank you. Nice. Now, cracking the egg. Wow, nice job. You definitely know how to crack an egg. Yeah. You got that part down. Make sure you don't get any shell. I know that. Yeah. Wash my hands. There you go. Just don't leave it too long there on the stove. <laughs> now we're making a fried egg. I don't know what kind of eggs you like at home, but this is a fried egg. So what do I do to the yolk? Do well, I do you... Well, it looks like it already spread out a little bit. You can leave it like that if you want. No, it's probably good. Okay. Do you like salt and pepper? Maybe just uh, slightly less pepper than last time? Yeah, just a little dash? Sure. A little bit of salt, maybe? Yeah, and then you just kind of leave it alone. You actually don't have to stir it up. Is that what you did last time? Yeah, one like this. Is that how you do it? Not quite. Uh, not for a fried egg. So you just kind of crack it and you're going to let it go. And you see how it's getting all kind of like bubbly and stuff? Yeah. So we'll let it kind of cook and get nice and it's bubbly around the, the outside. outside. Yes, we want those whites to start to get sort of like golden brown and bubbly. So how come... So sorry if you guys are hungry and you're watching us cook eggs. How come my egg turned out like that last time? How come it got all burnt and um, half raw? Well, I'm not sure. It could have been all the stirring, and then it was on high heat, and then you kind of took it off maybe before it was done. There's maybe a few things I would have done differently. It looks like this is getting close to ready to flip. Do you want to do that by yourself, or you need some help? Uh, can you help me? Sure. So, let's see. So we're just going to kind of go up under there, oh. and then whoop. <laughs> there we go. Mostly. We mostly got that right. Yeah, that part's kind of hard. There we go. And then we'll just kind of let it cook a little bit more. Is this looking a little bit better than the last egg? That's <laughs> in the trash can. In comparison, um, one out of ten, this is probably like a nine. That is a zero point negative zero. Okay. So we'll just let it get cooked. The edges are a little bit golden brown. And you can cook it like how you want your yolk, right? Yeah, that's the inside. That's that yellow part is the yolk. Some people like it kind of runny with a nice piece of toast. I like and mine all the way cooked. All the way done where it's not like runny and goopy at all. No. Nope. Mm, okay, gotcha. I know some people like it like that though. Yeah, everybody likes it a little bit different. So I'm not here to make the eggs I want. I want you to be able to make those eggs. <laughs> you would like it. All right, how's it looking? You think you feel like you're about done? Probably. All right. I think so too. Woo, it's still stuck a little bit. Yeah, just a little but bit. But that's all right. If I were to compare this, some of you remember, yeah, get some of those little scraps that are on the edge that are good and like golden brown. Yeah, let's do it. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. So it's just still stuck a little bit, but chunk. not as much. Not a little bit, maybe from the previous egg that we didn't get all the way out. I would still say, Cora, um, I'm gonna say this looks slightly better than our last egg. What do you guys at home think? Would you rather eat this egg? Or the, the one egg? in the trash can? <laughs> Probably this one. All right. Let's taste this. You might be asking yourself, why in the world are Pastor Emily and Cora cooking eggs when we're supposed to be doing children's church? Well, last week we talked about Pentecost. And if you remember that story, it's when God sent the Holy Spirit. You might remember we talked about like flames and there was a rushing wind and they started speaking in other languages and so the Holy Spirit came and here's what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit before Jesus left the earth he said I'm going to send you a helper now some of us don't like to think that we need help right why do you think sometimes we don't hmm. want help that's a good question I think sometimes kids like my age when they're doing something really new it seems really cool and they want to be able to do it all by themselves. It feels cool. Like you could even tell your friends, like, I did it by myself. I didn't need any help, right? It makes us feel good about ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes we feel embarrassed when we have to ask for help. Like it seems like everyone else understands maybe something in class or you feel like you should be able to do it, but you don't know how to do it yet. And so you're kind of embarrassed to ask for help. Have you ever felt embarrassed to ask for help? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. I know I have before. 
And so what the Holy Spirit does, when we call on the Holy Spirit for help, the Holy Spirit helps us. Because following Jesus is hard, especially at the beginning when we're just learning about who Jesus is and what he taught. Like, let's take, for example, when he says to, like, love your enemies, which means to, like, love and pray for the people that maybe are hard to love. Do you need help with that? Or are you like, nah, I can do that easily by myself? I need help with that because it's not easy <laughs> it's to not. care for the people that hurt. It, that's right. It's not. And so maybe you're in a situation sometime and you kind of forget that you're supposed to be nice. But then all of a sudden you remember that Jesus said to love your enemies. And so you're able to be nice to that person that maybe isn't always nice to you. That's the Holy Spirit helping us, right? Yeah. Helping us be nice to people that are maybe hard to be nice to sometimes. Or maybe telling the truth. Is it always easy to tell the truth? Mm. You're pretty honest. Mm, not all the time, though. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to tell the truth, like, when your parents ask you if you did something wrong and you did it, but you don't want to get in trouble, so you're like, no, I didn't do that. Right? And then sometimes we remember, like, oops, I wasn't supposed to do that. That's the Holy Spirit reminding us. Right now, picture that I had come in after Cora did the first egg, and I was like, oh my goodness, that's awful. You're the worst at cooking eggs. Don't ever do that again. Then how am I supposed to learn how to do it? Right? And how would you have felt? I would have felt horrible. Would you have felt confident? No. No, would, not at all. I would probably never make eggs again. Right. So what the Holy Spirit does is we mess up, and then like we ask Him for help. Then the Holy Spirit comes and helps just remind us and coach us a little bit. Cora was still the one making the eggs, right? You guys could see. I just came alongside to help and ask questions and give some guidance and just help a little bit, right? And one day, Cora won't need me to stand next to her in her kitchen when she's a grown-up <laughs> helping her make eggs, right? <laughs> because she's going to remember this time where we learned how to make eggs together. And it's kind of like that with our relationship with God. Right? Some things are really hard at the beginning, but then we begin to remember more and more what Jesus said, and some things get easier, but then we got to learn a new thing. Like, Cora's going to have to learn how to drive a car one day. So maybe she'll know how to make eggs perfectly, but then we got to learn something new. And guess what? I will be there, and Pastor Matt will be there to help her learn how to drive a car one day, too. I certainly don't want her to go try to do that by herself the first time. No, 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 no. That could be more dangerous than cooking eggs by herself for the first time, do well, you think? unless the eggs caught fire. This is true. That's, yeah, that's a good point. So we wanted to do this today just to illustrate that God is there for us to ask for help, and that is why the Holy Spirit came. Because God doesn't expect us to try to follow Jesus and remember everything all by ourselves. We're just human. We're not God. We're not going to remember everything. We're not going to always do the right thing the first time or maybe even the 100th time. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is always there to comfort us and guide us and help us and remind us of what Jesus said. And he's not doing it in like a mean, nasty voice. He's doing it in a really kind voice saying like, hey, why don't you try it this way? And the Holy Spirit is always there helping us. And this is never going to be a perfect picture of the Holy Spirit because obviously I'm not the Holy Spirit right? But this is just one example of what it looks like when we don't ask for help and what it looks like when we do ask for help. And the fact that God is always, always ready for us to ask him for help. So I'm going to pray so that Cora can finish her eggs. But we're so glad that you all joined us today. So let's pray. Okay. All right. God, we thank you so much that you sent the Holy Spirit to be our helper. And that when we mess up or we're confused or we don't understand or it's just hard to follow you and do the right thing, that your Holy Spirit is right there to help us every step of the way. Not in a mean way or a way that tells us that we really messed up and we'll never get it right, but in a way that is gentle and loving and kind and that is helping us every single day to grow stronger and to learn how to follow you even better. So God, we thank you for that. Thank you that we can ask you for help. And we ask you for help today that you would remind us what Jesus told us to do and that you would give us the strength to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you, Cora, for helping. Bye. Bye.